We want to look at a ratio test. In a geometric series, we know the ratio of consecutive terms is constant, we call that r, and the series only converges if the absolute value of r is less than 1. So let's consider a series that is not geometric but acts like a geometric in a series in nature in that the ratio of consecutive terms, although not a constant, approaches a constant, i.e. that the limit is a constant. If that's the case, then if the limit of this ratio of consecutive terms, which we'll call L, if that is less than 1, then this is acting like a geometric series and the L is acting like an R, and our series will converge. It won't converge to the same value the geometric series did, but it will in fact converge. If that value of L is bigger than 1, then this series will diverge. Now we're going to work a lot with factorials during this time, so I want to remind you of some of the manipulation of factorials. For example, if I said I want to expand n factorial, we know that's equal to n times n minus 1 factorial, which would be n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 factorial. We can keep going all the way till we get to 1. Also, if I said I have 2n factorial, I want to expand that, that is not the same as 2 times n factorial. The parentheses here are critical. I'm taking the number 2n and I'm starting from there and doing a factorial. So if I said, for example, 2 times 10 factorial, that's 20 factorial. That is most definitely not equal to 2 times 10 factorial. So we want to make sure we're very, very careful with our manipulation of parentheses. Now we're going to look at a couple of examples that are fairly challenging. The first one, let's consider the sum of n factorial squared over 2n factorial. So in using the ratio test, I need to write down the consecutive terms, which is a little tricky with factorials, so we want to replace n with n plus 1. So we're looking at the limit of n plus 1 factorial, quantity squared, over 2 times n plus 1, the entire quantity, factorial. We're now going to divide it by this term, which is the nth term. So for ease of calculation, we'll write it as multiplied by the reciprocal. all inside the absolute value. Now this quantity here looks kind of scary, so we need to expand the terms really one at a time. So if I take the n plus 1 factorial squared, I know that's n plus 1 times n factorial quantity squared, which would be n plus 1 squared n factorial squared. Secondly, this term here, which is 2 times n plus 1 quantity factorial, is simply 2n plus 2 factorial, which is 2n plus 2, 2n plus 1, 2n quantity factorial. So now when we expand this limit, we're going to see that we get something like this. My numerator is going to be n plus 1 squared n factorial squared times 2n quantity factorial. My denominator, 2n plus 2, 2n plus 1, 2n factorial, times this term, n factorial squared. So now we notice that all of the factorial terms are going to cancel very nicely. And what that leaves us with is a limit of a rational function, which is our favorite one to work with. Since all of the terms are going to be positive, I'll go ahead and drop the absolute value. Right now we have a second degree polynomial over a second degree polynomial, so we can just take the ratio of the lead coefficients. We'll see that's equal to 1 fourth, which is less than 1. Therefore, our original series converges by the ratio test.
Now we're going to look at another example that's a little bit more complicated. n to the n over n factorial. Now n to the n is an odd function because it's neither exponential nor is it polynomial, so the expansion is going to be a little bit tricky. When I perform the ratio test, and I take the limit as n goes to infinity, I replace n with n plus 1, both in the base and the exponent, and in the factorial term, then again, dividing by this entire quantity is equivalent to multiplying by its reciprocal. Now, I can easily expand the factorials, but the exponentials are going to present a little more of an issue. So on top, I'm going to have n plus 1 times n plus 1 to the n, using, using properties of exponents, times n factorial. This term here is going to be n plus 1 times n factorial times n to the n. Now you'll notice, once again, all of the factorial terms will cancel nicely, and the n plus 1's will also nicely. But that leaves us with two exponential terms. So I have n plus 1 to the nth over n to the nth. Both terms are growing without bound, and because this is not a rational function, I can't use any exponent argument here but I can use the fact that they have the same exponent and write it as n plus 1 over n all raised to the nth power. Now, within this quotient, I can pull it apart, as we often do in class, and that will leave me with 1 plus 1 over n to the nth power, which we should recognize this is the value of e. And since e is greater than 1, this series right here will diverge by the ratio test. Now I've posted several examples in the notes, so I want you to make sure you read those and copy and practice them.